This is a, a very familiar passage of Scripture, and you think about this miracle, uh, and some people try to lessen the miracle. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that, but the interesting thing about this is, to me, is that in this situation, uh, they come to Christ with a problem. And basically the main problem was that people were hungry. There were thousands of people there. They had no food to give them that they knew of, except they only knew about a little boy's lunch, some fish, some bread. And they said to Jesus, why don't we send everybody home from the conference so they can get something to eat? Because, you know, it's kind of like one of those church dinners when you're expecting uh, 20 people and 100 people show up. And we begin to panic, like, how are we going to feed this many people? There's just, uh, there, we don't have enough food. And somehow, some way, it happens. We, we, we find a way, you know, we, we might have to throw in this or that and add some stuff here, or run to the store, get some cookies. But somehow, miraculously, we're able to feed all of them and nobody goes hungry. And I'm not exactly sure uh, about the how of this miracle, except that Jesus performed a miracle. But I want to talk to, today more about uh, the what and the why. You know, well, what did Jesus say to them as they come to Jesus and said, Lord, you need to give them something to eat or you need to send them home so that they can get something to eat. Jesus looks at them and says, you give them something. You do it. Which is a reminder to me is that God works through people. God always does His work, whether it's the miraculous or whether it's just some uh, kind gift that we bring. He does it through us. You know, God could have chosen to, to do this miracle with just a word. He did as He stood, stood on the bow of a ship and said, Peace be still, and the storm was silenced. And he could have done that. But instead, he decided that he would work through the people. And that's what we have to understand that, you know, sometimes we, we say to God, Lord, why don't you do something? And he says to us, I did, like that song, that's why I created you. I want you to give them something, I want you to help. I want you to be a part of this. And, and they might say, well, you know, and you might say the same thing. It's inadequate. What we have is inadequate. We're not able to do it. And God says to us, you do what you're supposed to do, and I will add to that, and I will make sure it works. God works through people. He really does. And He's always uh, chosen to do that. And, you know, I, I've seen people many times, and in hospitals and as we visit people who who seem to think that uh, that they don't have to do anything that you know that they don't they're not going to listen to the doctors they're not going to listen to to the medical staff because God's going to take care of them we're all reminded of that story of the guy who drowned you know that was up on the roof and the flood came when he thought God was going to take care of him and in the end found out that God had sent his rescue God had worked through people but he refused to accept that and the same thing is true in our lives. Uh, there's a story that uh, I read, and maybe you've seen this uh, a few years ago. It was uh, there was an article, and actually, uh, maybe you saw the the advertisement, the news article, or whatever. It said the Arkansas woman texted father's number every day after he died, and she got a response four years later. Uh, her name was Chastity Patterson, and she was 23 years old. And her father, who was actually her stepfather, but whom she had called dad all of her life, who was so special to her, had died. And as a way to help um, her with her grief, her grieving process, she texted him every day, even though she knew he had died. And told her about her day, and told her about her life, things that she would have told him had he lived. 
and even uh, continued to tell about uh, people that she might date. And one, one day, uh, almost four years to the day that he died of the anniversary, she texted a message to him. And she said that, told him that she, you know, she had survived cancer and, and she had uh, not been sick since he died. And talked about a boyfriend that she had met and yet he broke her heart. And she joked about the fact that if he would have been alive that he probably would have beat him up. And just went on and on about her, her life. The next day she receives a text from a man whose name was Brad, not her father, but a man whose name was Brad who said, I've been getting your texts for four years now. And Brad said, I, I never responded to you, but I, I, I want you to know that your texts have been life-saving for me. I lost my daughter in a car accident several years ago, and having these texts has kept me alive, really. They've meant so much, and I, I knew that this was just God speaking to me. Chastity posted on her Facebook that sometimes God shows up in strange ways. And you know, sometimes God does things through the ordinary that it almost seems miraculous, the way God brings people and things and times together. It's just an amazing thing. He may not always suspend the laws of nature, and oftentimes I think he, he, that's what he doesn't do that. He, he works through people to do great things. One of my favorite quotes by uh, Hudson Taylor is, expect great things from God and attempt great things for God. God does some great things through his people. And so we come to the feeding of the 5,000. And the people are hungry. And let's uh, speed up a few years around the 19th century. And we have a, a, a theologian by the name of Heinrich Paulus who looked at the feeding of the 5,000 a little differently. Paulus was uh, not one who accepted miracles easily. But what he, when he looked at the feeding of the 5,000, what he believed and what he proposed is that basically what happened was when all the people with money, the wealthier people showed up, they began to share from their resources. And the sharing of this multiplied until there was enough to feed thousands of people. Well, I don't know about that. I, I, I tend to believe that this was God doing a miracle. I still, I still believe that. But it does bring out a point that God sometimes and often does work through you and I and through our hands. And what little we are able to bring to God, God can use that to do great things. Just look throughout the Bible and you see how God took ordinary people with limited and meager supplies and did great things. And He can do that for you and I. Isaiah 55 verses 8 and 9 talk about the fact that God's ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways are not our ways. And sometimes we read that and we think that means that, that God can do things that we cannot do. And, and there's, yeah, there's truth to that. But the, the other side of that coin is this, that sometimes God uses us and our means to do great and wonderful things. He is God, and He's able to do many, many wonderful things. And I've seen God work in our lives, sometimes just by uh, what seems like a chance encounter. It's God doing, I think, bringing things together. There's a book called Small Miracles. It tells a story about a lady who, uh, well, her name was Carol Anderson. Her husband, who she loved and had a wonderful relationship, died when he was 35. Another person whose name was Bob Edwards had a wife whom he loved who died when she was 29. They spent several lonely years, painful years, alone, till finally these two met. And they had a wonderful relationship, except for one thing. Bob wanted to talk about the past. He wanted to talk about his ex-wife, and he wanted to talk about 
uh, not his ex, but the wife that had died. And, and, and he wanted to talk to Carol about her husband. But it was too painful for Carol. She just couldn't bring herself to talk about it. And she would say, you know, why resurrect ghosts? Let's just leave the past in the past. It's too painful. And so Bob, to his disappointment, uh, continued to not bring those things up. Eventually, though, Carol was able to, to get to the place where she could talk about it. One day they were looking at pictures, and she said, this is me and my husband when we uh, went to France. And we, uh, we went to a place called Loretta's. A very f familiar shop, and and uh, and he said, "You went to Lourdes?" He said, "My wife and I went there too. What an what an amazing coincidence!" And she's like, "Well, that's not such a big deal." I said, "She said, probably half the world goes there." <laughs> but then he looked at that picture again. He said, "Who are those people in the background there?" She said, "I don't know. Just some random people who happened to be going by when we were taking the picture." And she said, I understand it looks why you're saying that because it looks like they're almost posing in our picture. But I, I'm sure it's just an illusion. And Bob said, look at that picture again. That's me and my wife. <laughs> you know, whether God has taken some miraculous thing and making it happen, whether he's suspending the law of nature and standing on the boat and telling the waves to be still, or whether he's just taking a little boy's lunch and feeding thousands of people. God is always doing wonderful and miraculous things in our lives. And sometimes just when we meet the right person at the right time and things happen in such a way in a spiritual moment, you know that the sacred moment. You've been there. Those moments that you could not have planned if you tried. But things come together in, the way, in a way that you were able to experience a God moment. A moment where the universe just seemed to agree and God seemed to just put things together in the right place. And you just realize this is a special moment. This is a special time. I wasn't there when Jesus turned the water into wine. And I wasn't there when he fed thousands of people with a little boy's lunch. But yet I've seen God work in my life, and I've seen him work in the life of the church. And I've seen God do things, even in the midst of a pandemic, that just blows my mind. That when we think, well, this is it, our church is gone, then all of a sudden we reach more people than we've ever reached before through technology. God is able to do that. As I think about the fact that God uses you and I, I think about this little church sitting here on the hill that most people don't even know where it is. People pass by don't even realize it's a church because we're kind of hidden back in here. But think about what is done just through the hands of the people in this church. I think of people like Sarah who go to the uh, Appalachian Pregnancy Care Center and takes all the clothes of those children and washes them and irons them and puts them back and hangs them. Nobody else does that. What a wonderful ministry that is. I think about the many ministries that we do here uh, from this church. And recently we were able to give to the school, the Christian School Mountain Mission. We are giving to help in hands. And we do so on a regular basis. And so many other ministries and things that we're able to do because of people like you. God works through people. And you may say, well, I don't feel adequate. I don't feel like what I have is enough. But yet, if we bring it together, God is able to take that and do something great with it. So I want to encourage you today to keep on keeping on. Try not to give up in spite of the fact that you may not be able to be in church like you'd like to be. But we can always find ways to connect with one another if we try. I want to pray as the musicians come this morning. Lord, right now I pray for everyone who's listening to this sermon and this service. God, that you might bless them in a special way today. Help them, Lord, I pray to find comfort and peace, and to know, God, that you will use them and use people like us to do extraordinary things. Forgive us of our sins and lead us in the way you'd have us go. 
In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Um, I want to thank you for joining us. Uh, I don't know, we'll look and see who all has attended our service today. If you don't mind, just uh, put a note that you were here, you were attending. I did see my good friend uh, John Fox. Dr. Fox is uh, a person who uh, has been influential in many ways in my life, and he has uh, been uh, the one who has tried to work on preserving the, the Wilderness Road, the 1776 uh, road thank you for joining us today and uh, for those of you that um, are out there and you just need to to know that somebody cares I want you to know that we care we care and that uh, feel free to send us a note or whatever if you need a special prayer we'll be be sure to do that may the Lord bless you and keep you today may he give you his peace and may his face shine upon you and be gracious to you amen